Jedi Fallen Order pushes all the right buttons for a Star Wars action adventure. It's a genre remix that samples the combat and exploration of a lightened up Dark Souls and the action and energy of Uncharted, and that works out to be a great fit for the return of the playable Jedi. Who is your master, Padawan? Someone I killed, perhaps? What Jedi gave their life so that you might live? This story is dark and absolutely drenched in the trauma of the aftermath of Emperor Palpatine's purge of the Jedi Order five years earlier. Both our young ginger Jedi hero Cal Kestis and his new mentor, Sarah Junda, are defined by survivors' guilt and remorse over what they had to do to escape Order 66. Cal's respectably acted by Cameron Monaghan, even if he never really develops a strong personality that separates him from other generic good guy Jedi characters. Sarah, on the other hand, far outshines him with an anguished performance from Deborah Wilson. We can't let the sacrifice of those closest to us be for nothing. Even the Imperial Jedi Hunter's second sister has unexpected depth, which is a pleasant surprise after the two-dimensional Inquisitors seen in Star Wars Rebels. A little bit of the original trilogy's swashbuckling charm shines through, though. Calicam! You were talking in your sleep. Weirdo. And we get a fair amount of comic relief from Captain Grease and the ever-adorable chicken leg droid BD-1. Get it? Bud D? Oh, I'm happy to see you too. He's extremely useful thanks to his hacking abilities and how he'll jump off your shoulder to subtly draw your attention to interesting stuff. The main quest sends our freckle-faced force user and crew on the Star Wars version of an Indiana Jones archaeological adventure, from the opening scene where the remains of the prequel trilogy are being literally torn apart for scrap. The attention to detail and obvious love for the source material shows. Nearly everything looks and sounds amazing and authentic, though the walking carpets that are the Wookiees do look offensively ugly. Glad to help. All of that detail isn't free. Jedi Fallen Order aims for 60 frames per second in performance mode on Xbox One X and PlayStation 4 Pro, but it doesn't always stay on target. Even a PC with a GeForce 2080 has trouble on ultra settings. And especially when you're entering a new area, there tends to be a moment of choppiness, but it passes before the action starts. This is a Jedi? <laughs> Jedi Fallen Order incorporates just about every trick in the third-person action game playbook and the throw ride is at its best when it's chaining all of these together and requiring a bit of timing to pull off. It only gets better as more force abilities are introduced and enhanced. The lightsaber is the only weapon you'll use, so it's a good thing it looks and sounds completely authentic to the movies and feels great. Combat definitely draws from Dark Souls with its emphasis on carefully timing strikes, parries, and dodges while watching the enemy for tells. On Jedi Master difficulty, I found that just about every enemy was seriously dangerous, especially in groups. Except for basic stormtroopers, who are very on-brand and easy to kill. Okay, I got this. I got this. Lucky move! Sparring with bosses and foes with lightsaber-like weapons looks especially fantastic. Nailing your part of this precise, on-the-fly choreography of blocking, countering, and dodging unblockable attacks is always rewarding, and the excitement is frequently refreshed by a surprisingly wide selection of enemy types. But yeah, it's kind of a bummer the humanoid enemies don't get carved up like the droids and the beasties, because moves like this really should take off a chunk. Cal's collection of force powers is pretty conservative. It's mainly a time freeze, push, and pull. But they're all useful in multiple ways in combat and puzzle solving, so it feels more diverse than that. And all I really need is to be able to shove dudes off ledges. Speaking of falling, when you die that way, you instantly come back to try again. But when you're struck down, consequences are more severe but cleverly handled. While you do lose your accumulated XP when you're killed, you get it all back the first time you strike your killer. Not only that, your health and force meter are refilled, so you're taking them on at full strength. That's a great way to give you a leg up against something you had a hard time with already. Also borrowing from Dark Souls, Jedi Meditation Circles let you set your spawn point and give you the opportunity to spend any skill points you've earned. But if you rest to restore all your health, force, and healing items, it respawns every enemy on the map. Considering how tough some enemies are, that's not a no-brainer decision. BD! Though they seem small at first, each world you visit is revealed to be surprisingly large, with huge sections and shortcuts locked behind barriers you'll eventually learn to overcome. Some of them are dramatically different from area to area, and a few really cool ones stand in stark contrast with traditional Star Wars settings. Several, especially the ancient alien tombs you raid, are loaded with simple but fun puzzles. I admit one or two were tricky enough to make me scratch my head for a while. There's almost never too much of it at once, though, so between that, combat, and platforming, you're rarely doing the same thing for long. 
The map screen is minimalist, but it does give you an idea of where you've been, how much is left to do in an area, and the direction you should head in. That's especially useful when you're headed back to your ship after completing a story objective, since there's no fast travel. I also really appreciated that it clearly marks where you can't go yet because you don't have the right abilities, and highlights the new places you can go with something you recently unlocked. Huge time saver right there. You'll find tons of cosmetic loot in chests and forced echoes, aka Jedi audio logs, and that gives you plenty of reason to veer left when you're told to turn right or to revisit an old location. Sometimes you'll even find a chest with a permanent health or force boost, which kept me turning over every rock. You'll also gather a heaping pile of customizable lightsaber parts that let you personalize the hell out of it, but it's all cosmetic. Improving in combat is all up to you. Without spoiling the ending, Jedi Fallen Order sticks the landing with its story after around 20 excellent hours. It's wrapped up with a tough, climactic boss fight and a thrilling finale, and there's no big cliffhanger to worry about. After all, we already know where the galaxy needs to end up by Episode 4. I mean, with the Force? Yes, with the Force. I know you said it could be overwhelming. I haven't gotten myself killed yet. It's been ages since we got a great single-player Star Wars action game. A strong cast sells a dark story while keeping things fun and loyal to Star Wars lore and fast, challenging combat mixes with energetic platforming, decent puzzles, and diverse locations to explore for an all-around amazing game. For more Star Wars, check out 20 minutes of gameplay and our combat tips. And for everything else, stick with IGN.